Mr. Green. Voitot pankkitilillesi viidessä minuutissa. This is Andy McCoy from the AM Man and you're watching Chaos TV. This is Matthew Genitis, Andy McCoy with the AM Band. You're watching Chaos TV. Okay, so what's up everyone? Chaos TV is today here at Rock in the City Festival in Pori, Finland and we have Andy McCoy and, and Matthew from Andy McCoy Band here as guests. AM Band as guests. So first of all, hello guys and, and welcome to Chaos TV. How's the summer been for you? Pretty laid back because of this uh, coronavirus, as everybody knows, a lot, a lot. A lot of stuff got cancelled, so therefore it's been like a vacation type yeah. of summer. You know? and I think we've been some of the few fortunate bands in the world that were able to have the opportunity to play live shows because Finland is still allowing that Some as of now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, compare, by comparison to like certain countries, you can't do shit. Yeah. Know? So obviously. Coronavirus shocked the world in March. So, yeah. did you ever did did you ever expect that it would get to this point, that well, festivals will be cancelled? And if you add a normal super flu, they come at least once every ten years, and it's nothing out of the usual. But this is the first time we've had it with social media interference, and they were basically putting on the whole spiel about it being like a, worse than it really is. It's a super flu and a normal flu, yearly flu, actually kills more people than this has. It's just the social media, they've been making it, turning it into a hysteria. So what about you? Did you ever expect that it would get to this point? Um, I actually think it's a situation where kind of like 9-11 and some other big events that happen, this is actually bigger because it's everybody in the world has been affected. And it's uh, it's just a big impact that we're just trying to evolve and figure out new ways of doing live streaming. Andy, uh, we did some live streaming and uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, for me personally, it's open up the power of the computer if you use it. But uh, at the same time, it's really frustrating. You do a live stream gig with no audience. Uh, you don't have the audience feedback, so it changes a lot of things, you know. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you that you played those live stream shows that how different it is compared to a normal show because there is no audience. Is, is it like easy to get into the playing mood, so to say, because there is nobody watching? I think for me personally, just to play is fun and yeah. we hadn't played much. So, of course, the absence of the audience makes a difference. But one doesn't think about it while yeah. one's doing it. One's just playing and it was just fun to play. It almost feels like we're like we're rehearsing. Like when yeah. we're rehearsing, we have a good time and we have good energy. And we, we tape a lot of the rehearsals yeah. anyway, because we rehearse in a studio with all the amenities available. So, but of course, having a live audience so gives it an extra kick. You know? So, creative-wise, how has this time been? For you too, do you are you like more creative than normally, or it's or? Not very inspiring. You gotta understand the world has basically stopped, so yeah. there's not as much inspiration coming through because ideas come from other people, seeing things, hearing things, and we kind of on the minus side. Now, of course, new stuff has come out, song ideas, songs. Stroke on the other day, actually got a plate, cool. To a uh, very up by majors. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the bitchiest part has been just waiting, waiting, waiting for information. Uh, 
Is this gonna be like prolonged again and shut up again? Like, take Japan for instance. Uh, all this stuff went down about a week before we were about to go to Japan. Uh, so we wanted to cancel them, but nobody wanted to return their tickets. They just didn't dare to come to the gigs, so we had to postpone it. We're going now in the end of January, beginning of February. But if it's hopefully, oh, yeah, well, if it gets cancelled again, we'll cancel and people will get refunded because then we might as well rework the whole. It was supposed to be PR for the last album, new album, which isn't new anymore. Yeah. So it kind of cut us short. It took away a six week European tour and took away a lot of stuff from uh, so almost 30 summer festivals around Europe. Yeah, I guess it must feel sad in a way that you are not able to promote the album properly. Uh, really feel any pity for the band. I feel pity for the fans who've been waiting so long, you know. But I'm sure they understand it's not our fault. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So if they don't, then they do lack understanding. That department's a bit short in that case. So have you sort of made changes to your like originally plans now because of this? Are you like no, more writing no. new music and focusing on no. that? writing you at least I have been and they many people in this band write and we've been doing what we can you know he's been working with other people and I've been painting and writing songs I don't really work with other people but the band uh, it's just been an extended break that came up pretty unexpectedly yeah I think Andy's a very creative person he's been painting a lot I know Myself, I've been going on live yeah, streams on like Instagram and trying to talk stuff, to people yeah. and see what's going on with the whole situation. Keeping the profile alive. Keeping the profile, yeah, keeping my, alive, my profile yeah. alive and showing everybody that I'm here and I'm just trying to adapt to this new situation. Yeah, not just lying on this couch smoking weed and watching yeah, reruns yeah, of the Three Stooges. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, but this is also a good way, a, a good time to get name out if you do things properly it is, a good t it is a good time for that if you take advantage of that yeah and don't let don't let it depress you and think that you uh -huh. have to stay inside yeah. because there's things to do yeah so have you had like any painting ex exhibitions recently uh, well, I, I got one going which is mainly my wife angela mccoy's nicoletti mccoy's works it's kind of a joint thing but i only have a few paintings there because uh I have a lot of half done but, uh, things, but they're really big when it comes to size and Hard Rock Cafe is limited in that, in those terms. So I'm uh, planning on having something big uh, next spring, like in a bigger place. So do you find a lot of similarities between painting and making music? Or are they like totally different? I don't see much of a difference in the creative process. It's like when you start writing a song, you got an idea it's gonna go this way, but it might end up something totally different. The same goes for painting. You know, you can do a real black and white song. With that, I mean like stick to an old formula and not to add anything really new, or you can make it in multi-color 3D and it takes on a totally different perspective and I think the same applies pretty much for writing songs so today you will be yeah so today you will be actually performing in front of a, a, a right audience and not TVs or anything oh, like that right wing what? right wing audience no right, right audience and not TVs oh, or, or or cameras or or whatever equipment yeah so because, uh, I'm fed up with this clips that turn up that people uh, film with their telephones yeah. I mean a telephone and a camera should not be connected that's just my opinion because uh, they move around and 
they only get the sound that's coming into their very spot, which might not be ideal when it comes to the the balance of the instruments, the acoustics and the pickups are what they are, you know. So there's all kind of shit on YouTube that necessarily should not be there. Uh, actually, there should be some kind of bullshit control, you know. Does it does it bother you when you see somebody filming a show? Well, does it know, does it bother you when you are performing and somebody? That it is. It's restricting because there's no point of playing unreleased new songs because they get all over and people might not get the real the right picture of the song. It might be all totally worked out. In the old days, I used to do with my bands was uh, what we used to do was we jam on a song live and it would evolve um, and when you'd finally record it it would hardly resemble the original idea there might be some bits so in that way yeah it's limiting it's not as free as it was once upon a time that's what why i like the uh, the live streaming because i think they're going to develop yeah, a way to that portable way we get control yeah if you can if you can portable live stream shows that way everybody's cell phone isn't necessarily taking the audio and the video you're doing a proper video and proper sounds and it's a better uh, representation of the show yeah, than, than the cell phones but i don't think we can stop the cell phones i don't know uh, it's too late for that it's yeah. too late for it's it's same with streaming that it's too late for that I, I don't know if streaming is a good or bad thing. It, it, I, it, I don't see anything negative in live streaming because one can control the sound, bring in good sound guys and stuff. One can actually control the sound better at those than at normal live gigs. Yeah, I think that's something that will become like a big It'll become a normal. normal. Yeah, normal in the music business in the future. I think we were among the first bands, at least in this country, to because of the coronavirus, who did a live stream, and after we did it, it seemed like everybody started doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some live shows on national TV, and man, they sounded horrible. You could hear it was the Finnish national TV because they don't really give a shit about how the bands sound. It's like, we are union men. Oh, it's 10 to 2. Doesn't matter if you have a take, you're in the middle of a take, it's coffee break time because it's union rules. And also how those bands sounded. I'd hear the vocals with no effects, no EQ, nothing. And sometimes you'd hear the bass and a bit of drums, couldn't hear the keyboards or the guitar, or you can shuffle it any way you want. But they all sounded shit. At least our live stream sounded good we yeah, had a good yeah. sound uh, it's a pity that some of those guys really don't give a shit the, the guys who work for the national tv because if a band sounds like they mix them nobody would want to go and see them live yeah. but I, I think some people consider like live streaming threats to a live show, but obviously those are like two different things. So I, I, I wouldn't see those two like battling against each other. No, it's like looking back at the 70s when movies like Song Remains the Same came out and you could get bootleg copies of a lot of Stones gigs and a lot of other gigs, but they never rate anything away from the live show. If anything, they they supported the live show because yeah. it ain't the same being in your sitting room watching uh, something that was filmed. Uh, you don't get the same vibe as seeing it live. Yeah. First hand is first hand. You know? Yeah. So, in the end, what does the future hold for the band? Is it is it touring if it's possible, or or writing songs, or what what do you have in the scope? Well, we're working on all that. Of course, touring is if you're in a band. Why have a band if it doesn't play live? It doesn't make a point. I think a rock and roll band belongs on the stage. <laughs> but yeah, we got plans and we're gonna record and. 
We got a lot of ideas. Okay. Hey, thank you guys a lot for the time and, and good luck for tonight's show as well as for the future. Anything you want to say as last words to the fans well, watching this? We're grateful that you agreed to pay us for the interview, otherwise it wouldn't have happened. Um, so thank you for the money.